Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. If you're watching on YouTube, you can also uh, you can also subscribe in the uh, links below the uh, window here with the episode. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the uh, stories for this episode. Starting off over at Information Week, Red Hat Linux containers, not just recycled ideas. Red Hat and its partner Docker bring DevOps characteristics to Linux containers, making them lighter weight vehicles than virtual machines for cloud workloads. So uh, pretty interesting. Uh, some people accuse Red Hat of dusting off an old idea, which is Linux containers, and presenting them as if they were something new. Well, I would acknowledge that Sun Microsystems offered containers under Solaris years ago, and the concept isn't new, but Docker and Red Hat together have been able to bring new packaging attributes to containers, making them an alternative that's likely to exist alongside virtual machines for moving workloads into the cloud. So pretty interesting. Uh, again, you know, th this is just using old technology perhaps in a new, different way than how it's traditionally been used. But still, nonetheless, I thought it was an interesting read and thought I'd share it with you. From ZDNet, how to run Windows XP on Linux Mint with Oracle VirtualBox. This is from Stephen J. Von Nichols over in the Enterprise Software uh, and Linux and Open Source blog. Uh, so basically, this is a story that he wrote kind of because Windows XP is running out on support and there are, you know, users that, that need to be able to uh, try out new operating systems before they, you know, actually load it on their Windows XP machine because Microsoft no longer supports Windows XP. So anyway, that's that. So definitely check it out. It's a nice how-to. I thought it was interesting. From ZDNet, AMD demos a next-gen x86 server APU running Fedora Linux. This is pretty cool. Chipmaker AMD has announced a major milestone in the development of its enterprise software ecosystem with the first public demonstration of its second-generation AMD Optron X-series APU, codenamed Berlin. It's uh, running Fedora Linux at the Red Hat Summit 2014. So according to AMD, this is important because uh, x86 APU servers are x86, so if you don't want to introduce new tools and software platforms into, into your IT environment, you can still get the benefits without doing that. So it's a step forward in expanding the footprint of the x86 accelerated performance within the data center. So pretty interesting. Uh, definitely check it out. From eWeek, Ubuntu 14.04, Trusty Tar brings long term Linux desktop support. Pretty nice. Uh, so it entered general availability on April 17th. It's a special Linux distribution because it has a long-term support release. An LTS release offers the promise of five years of support, making it a suitable candidate for enterprise-grade deployments. So pretty interesting. Definitely look into it. From linuxgizmos.com, the BeagleBone Black doubles Flash and embraces Debian. That's right, a new revision of the BeagleBone Black uh, system on a board or system board, single board computer, SBC, uh, has been released, revision C. Um, it's slightly pricier uh, uh, of, over the uh, previous revision. But that's because it doubles the flash memory and switches from Angstrom to Debian Linux. So pretty interesting. Um, still has the same form factor, you know, all that good stuff. So if you're a BeagleBone Black user, you know, not a lot has changed. You just get more space, which is good. From electronicsweekly.com, TI Ops for Linux-based 
uh, on the mainline kernel. Texas Instruments has introduced a Linux software development kit based on a mainline Linux kernel for its Satara range of microcontrollers. They've committed to mainline Linux and collaborates with uh, the kernel.org community to provide annual support of the long-term stable kernels within its SDK. So definitely uh, a nice change for sure. From uh, dbta.com database trends and applications, SUSE Linux seeks an easier mainframe Linux installation. Uh, they are uh, basically trying to simplify SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 11 for System Z. Uh, it's optimized for IBM System Z uh, architecture. They're looking to make it simpler, easier to install. It's not quite the same as installing SUSE Linux on an x86 computer. So pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. Uh, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quickstuff.com or if you're on watching on YouTube in the uh, show notes here below the video. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.